Geek Tank Radio on 98.1 The Max. Welcome, everyone. We are the Geek Patrol, and our microphones don't have a stun setting. This episode of Geek Tank Radio is brought to you by Barry Allen's Babysitting Service. <laughs> I mean, do they have enough microwaves around uh, here to accommodate oh, this whole... Uh, no. Not nearly. <laughs> oh. Hey, if nothing else, you're, you're going to know exactly where your kids are. <laughs> He keeps it's them in danger. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, I'm going to say this. Yeah. If your baby looks like any of the babies in the Flash, you're already in danger because the AI is taking over. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, welcome to. Uh, it wasn't one of my best. But no, I it's put really it out not. There. But I appreciate the effort. It wasn't much effort either, uh, Brandon. <laughs> but anyway, uh, welcome to uh, Geek Tank Radio, uh, everybody. I'm Joe Thordeson here with my friends Brandon Olmstead and Alan Gilbreth and our buddy Max behind the glass and three guests today. Mm. Uh, it's that time of the year. It's one uh, of those crowded rooms, man. Astute listeners will recognize, of course, our, our pal Jesse Gaston, one of the founders of Anime Blues Con. Jesse, we Hi. always love having you here. Oh, always glad to be here. And you brought in uh, you brought in Rylan and uh, Jennifer, husband and wife duo, right? Hey, welcome. Good to be here. Okay, and uh, Jennifer, get up on the mic there. Hi, everybody. Okay. So we're, they're here because, as uh, most people would know, if you're in the Mid-South, Anime Blues Con is coming up <clears throat> July 7th through 9th. And you guys, hey, you are the biggest convention in Memphis. I mean, you had 7,000 people show up last year. Uh, I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head, but it was definitely busy. <laughs> it was a lot. So we, yeah, and, and we were there from day one. We've known you guys since the be the founding of Anime Blues. So today, folks, you might get a little history lesson mm. of where Anime Blues came from and uh, where they're going and what they got planned coming up in a couple of weeks. So we're going to uh, chime in on that. Brandon, uh, of course, the, the, one of the great benefits of having Jesse here is she is an artist and an art teacher. And you have strong feelings about AI art. <laughs> that strong is an understatement. Uh, do not appreciate it a lot at all. <laughs> okay, yeah. And uh, so. The one word right echoing through her mind is unemployment. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so. yeah that might be the right word. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have the same sensation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, Secret Invasion uh, got into some hot water because of that. And we'll, we'll weigh in on that uh, later in the show. But, Brandon, before we get. Let's. Uh, a trailer dropped, and we've all seen it. And, right. Uh, Pretty interesting. It doesn't look like the kind of movie I, uh, I would normally want to see, but I want to see this one. Okay, so I'm I'm going to go ahead and say I was really really looking forward to um, the Sony take on uh, Marvel's Craven the Hunter. I just did not expect it to be Sony's take on DC's Catman because it's more <laughs> him than it is anything like that. I want to give a shout out to Gail Simone for that one. Okay, but mm. I I I want my ticket now. No, Craven the Hunter. What's it's, the actor's name? Because it's a guy that played Aaron Quicksilver. Taylor Johnson. He played Quicksilver. He played uh, the main character in Kick Ass. He uh, he's cool. Um, I mean, he he looks he, he looks, was Pietro Maximoff. Yeah, the Quicksilver guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which, Because no, Craven the Hunter that. in the comics. Did you all read the Spider Man back in the day? Did oh yeah. Any of you? Okay. No. I always thought Craven was the goofiest. Car I never had any interest in him. He has the dumbest outfit, in my opinion. But he looks he looks cool here. I wouldn't I mean, say he's got the dumbest outfit, but I mean, it's... Well, next it's, to Rhino. You know, <laughs> hey, but, hey, uh, okay. we can get into bad 70s uh, and 80s costumes anytime you want to, but we don't have How enough time to really hit it. wearing this yellow time. spandex? How about that? No, yeah. no, Rhino. <laughs> well, I mean, he's, he was wearing Michigan colors, even though he was Canadian. It's okay. <laughs> well, I, I'm curious, what did you... Now, you, Je, uh, Jesse, you and Jennifer and Ryland literally just watched it before we went on the air. What's your hot take? It's very violent, um, which is not a bad thing necessarily. It just, uh, it just wasn't what I was expecting. Do you get into those kind of movies or no? I mean, I like John Wick. Does that count as violence? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. But, no but, but it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's four movies about, you know, avenging your dog. Yeah, don't it's, hurt it's, your dog. It's right. Don't hurt the dog. Do you yeah. know how much I cry when that dog died? Okay, mm. I have an issue now. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Okay, so but it, now it's Sony, Brandon. We're always funny right. about Sony pick because they can be I, hit or miss. We've seen I, all right. the good, the bad, and the ugly so, with Sony. So I, I like I like a lot of Sony films, and I am one of those guys who likes your your really bad big budget B movies uh -huh. like Venom. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so I'm this movie's basically made for me. So I'm excited, but I always go into a Sony film cautiously optimistic. I, I did go see uh, Ghostbusters Answer the Call on opening night. So that shows you that I'm willing to give anything a chance. Yeah, no kidding. So, hey, and, uh, 
I and, think, uh, and I'm like one of five people in the entire world that actually likes that movie because it's just goofy as all get out. I think Sony for me, it's always just about the pacing. It's not so much about the like like um in Venom, there were little parts where I'm like, okay, we didn't need to spend 15 minutes on that. That could have been a 30 second segment or thing. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like but I think I mean, that's that, more where that's, they fail. That's not so much Sony thing anymore than it is everybody because. I, I used to love being able to go into a Saturday matinee and watch an hour and a half movie and get a full story. And now I go and watch a movie that's two and a half to three hours long and, oh, watch out for the next chapter. If I wanted serials, I'd go back to the 40s. Okay, Brandon. Alan's got a way back machine. <laughs> Here's my other thing. But no, I want uh, the moment that he bit the dude's nose off. I was like, yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and slapped him across the face with uh -huh. a bear trap and uh, stuff. Dude. Okay, but but Brandon, we've seen. Okay, we right. saw a glimpse of the Rhino. Yes. Now I thought the Rhino, and it, it, who's not a favorite character of mine, but I thought he just puts on a suit and rams into things okay, and so, acts dumb. But so this guy have, looks genetic. They have like, changed the Rhino's origin more times than you have changed socks in the past two weeks. Okay, mm. all right. So you know, sometimes he's a guy who ended up in a suit, and because of some reason or not, he can't get out of it. There's the you know the whole genetically altered uh, outer skin. There's the ridiculously ignorant, uh, you know, mech suit. <laughs> I mean, in the sequel, it never happens. So, we yeah. well, no, no, that happened in the comics before it ever happened in, uh, you know, Amazing Spider-Man Two. Okay. So yeah, it, the Rhino is one of those guys they can't figure out how exactly they want him to be, and you know, we'll figure out what Sony wants. I thought the Ninja Turtles covered him just fine. Did they get? <laughs> yeah, well, well, Rocksteady's a much more interesting character. I'm know? just saying, I, you know, I, I mean, if general. we're going to do a rhino, I thought they did a pretty good one. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll have to give you that. <laughs> you can't you can't do the, I mean, hot, the, it's just the dumbest premise. I mean, it's fun when you're uh, no, a kid no, watching no, The Amazing Spider-Man. Joe, Spider Joe, but, look, I mean, at, look at the 90% of the old school Spider-Man villains usually got created because J. Jonah Jameson put money out there to capture Spider-Man. For, you know, the Daily Bugle, and, and these people go, I'm going to do this. And you end up with the Scorpion. Uh, or you end up with the Hobgoblin. Yeah. Or you end up with this. You rhino, the Rhino. It's it's ridiculous. And, yes, Craven was one of those coming after the bounty. Okay. All right. Well, hey, uh, pretty interesting stuff, and we're all going to be lining Plus up Russell when it comes out. Okay. Uh, but, mm -hmm. hey, you guys, we're going to take a quick break, then we're going to visit with our friends from Anime Blues Con. You are listening to Geek Tank Radio on 98.1 The Max. Captain Kirk just swung a flying leg kick through his radio. The Geek Patrol is back. Look at me that way. Right. <laughs> right. That's just... why we have. Uh, that's why we listen online as well. You yeah, can't kill. There, there, there's there's a reason there was wire food. You can't kill the internet. And welcome back to uh, Geek Tank Radio, everybody. I'm Joe Thorderson here with my friends Brandon Olmstead and Alan Gilbreth and our buddy Max over there behind the glass. And in the house we have our buddy uh, Jesse uh, Gaston. Founder of the uh, Anime Blues Con, along with uh, Rylan, Director of Media, and Jennifer, Director of Programming, a husband and wife duo. And you guys, Anime Blues is coming up. And um, it, Je Jesse, if there's one thing I'm proud of in Memphis geekdom is how well all the conventions work together to, to support one another. Because that's not the case in every city, right? Oh, but no, not at all. Um, can definitely speak to other cities. Not going to name them, but right. not the case. So I'm glad that we actually have that relationship here. I can name them for you. I can start yeah. getting them. If you want to call <laughs> them out, that's your business. Yeah. I'm not going to get in trouble. <laughs> we don't have enough time in the segment, Alan. No, that's true. Which has given us a, an interesting insight, Jesse, because we've known you for years. Now, Anime Blues, uh, the first one kicked off in 2010, right? Oh, wait, no, 2011. 2011. You yeah. we yeah, and we're more or less the same age. You actually f you you started planning Anime Blues two years out, which is right. probably a wise move. The Memphis Comic and Fantasy Convention uh, was 2010, but um, we said we, we don't count the first. The year. first year was a train wreck. We don't even the first year a train that. wreck for every. No con. no no no. no. <laughs> I'm gonna put this out there. Your first, I, we were all at the first Anime Blues Con, and all of us said together, we said. This does not look like a first year event. This looks like an event I, uh, that's been around for Okay, look, I've walked years. out was, the majority of what happened. I don't even I, uh, want to think about it. <laughs> it was very well produced. It was it, a lot of people showed up and I we thought you did a great job. So you have very high standards over there. Uh yeah, I think so. I think our group overall really has high expectations for what we want. 
Yep. And uh, so, but you got together with people that know how to organize a convention and you put it together. So you've, you've had experience for years before this, right? So. Right. Before I even came to ABC, I'd already been working for other conventions and we pulled people who already had experience. So we weren't completely starting from zero. Right. Exactly. Now, Rylan, um, where do you and Jennifer come into, how, how long have you been with Anime Blues? So. So both of us have been a part of Anime Blues in one way or another since the second year. The second year was the first year we attended. Right. And through that, eventually got roped into running it. (laughs) Roped in? Um, Okay. But, you know, it's it's been a... You drew the short straw? Right. It's been a a really, really great experience. I I, I feel that because I started off with Memphis Comic and Fantasy as the gaming guest the first year. And before the first convention, I was running gaming. Right. And now I run the con. Yeah, that, you got to watch that Kool-Aid, y'all. Yeah, You got to watch that Kool-Aid. But it tastes so good. <laughs> if you're out there and you say, I want to get involved with a convention, just be careful because if you're too good and too competent, mm. you're going to be... You're going to be roped into more responsibilities, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. you're going to be in it for life. I'm uh, celebrating my 10th year with the con this year, and it's been a long one, but it's been a fun one, too. So, well, Jennifer, what's interesting because, okay, so, you know, people, these titles, okay, everybody can understand founder. Jesse, you were one, and you wear so many hats. We don't want to name them all. You, you're sort of a utility person. At one time, you were the chairman, but Jennifer, you're the director of programming. Ryland's the director of media, but, People may not, people that aren't really familiar with conventions may not know what that's about, but the programming to me is one of the most important jobs there is, right? I mean, programming is a year round gig. Like people just think that we're there for that weekend and we prep maybe a little bit before, but <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely not. I just spent 12 hours yesterday putting the schedule into our app and everything. It's a it's a time consuming gig. And also you have to deal with people who might be a little upset that their panels didn't get picked or oh, stuff right. like that. But I mean, we try to pick the best program we can to give you guys the best con that you can attend. There's a whole lot of moving parts with that. It's like a Tetris gate. First of all, you got to fit everything in the schedule. Like Brandon, we've seen this. You're like, <laughs> okay, uh, 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 Jessica has a a panel at ten o'clock. Well, you can't because Jessica has to be in this other room at ten o'clock. And now yeah. we got to. Sh- and it's it's really tricky. You move one part. And it disrupts 10 other yeah. parts. So. Now, I don't know if you had to deal with this as much. I mean, working with a con, I'm sure you did. But that moment where you've got two conflicting people wanting to basically run the same panel. So you try and go, <laughs> well, you know, hey, you guys both, you know, want to talk about this. And then when you go, would you guys mind melding the panel together? And then both of them get mad at you? Oh, definitely. Definitely. They're like, no, it's my panel. And the other's like, no, it's my panel. I'm like, well, right now it's nobody's panel. Yeah. It's off the schedule. Yeah. <laughs> It's you like, did. it's my panel and you can be panelists. You got to have thick skin yeah, like, too, because sometimes the the brutal reality is some people are just better at this than other. And you, you, you need what's best for the attendees. So the boring person isn't getting the panel next year, right? I Definitely. Mean, yeah. We go through <laughs> and we audit every panel that comes in. And if it doesn't do well, it's, it's not coming back next year's schedule. So it's performance based. So definitely. Yeah. Um, but you're right. It's year round. And, uh, and then it's just a lot of emotional things with that so hey but uh rylan so director of media to me could mean quite a few things but yeah i i, I kind of wear a couple different hats um during the lead up and prep of the convention i'm mostly handling our social media uh making posts keeping people informed about upcoming things uh and then kind of my job on site is uh again with the social media but also to document the convention and what we need done running video cameras taking pictures of everything but yeah i mean that's that's kind of kind of where i'm at (laughs) that's one of the most important promotional things i'll give you all this too because i you did set record attendance last year and you know we have our promotional booth set up in the lobby which we always appreciate and uh i brandon i think more than ever last year i i we met a lot of people that said we've never been to we've never even heard of anime blues but they learned about it on social media with people posting. It's it, it's so. true, uh, and it was it was a really interesting group of people that you know you wouldn't have expected to be anime fans really, but they they heard about you guys uh, through various you know media, and were like, yeah, I didn't even know Memphis did anything like that, and it always gets me. I was like, we've got so many cons, and we've all been around for over a decade. It's like, come on, that <laughs> that's probably one of the most frustrating things about doing cons in Memphis is that you just never 
can get yeah. se- seem to get people to understand there's a lot going on here, no matter right. how much you advertise. And, and how many right. times have you, heard, you know, it's like you, someone goes, hey, have you heard about this? And he's like, yeah, this is the con I've been telling you about for the past five years. It's like, oh. oh it just I, doesn't I, connect. It doesn't, <laughs> it's like when your friend tells you something that's fun, you're like, all right, cool. But it's once you see, you know, especially, you know, with some of the great, you know, mascots you guys have had over the years that blend both anime and the music scene in Memphis and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, you would think that that would latch into people's minds. Yeah, I think it would. And there, but, but there's a lot going on, and so we're coming up. This is the twelfth, twelfth annual, and eleventh, eleventh. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, the twelfth, the eleventh annual anime blues. When we come back here on Geek Tank Radio, you're listening to Geek Tank Radio on ninety-eight one The Max. There's a reason Blue Milk has an expiration date. People, the Geek Patrol is back. Does not. I mean, there's no telling how old that stuff is, right? I mean, it doesn't turn pink or anything. What if it turns white when it goes stale? That'd be ironic. I anyway, have no welcome. comment. I have no <clears throat> comment. Welcome back to uh, Geek Tank Radio, everybody. I'm Joe Thorderson here with my friends Brandon Olmstead and Alan Gilbreth and our buddy Max over there behind the, ga- uh, the glass and three of our buddies from Anime Blues Con, Jesse Gaston, one of the founding uh, members of Anime Blues who wears many hats and we're not going to try to pigeonhole her because she you know she does it all uh jennifer and rylan a husband and wife duo jennifer you're the director of programming rylan you're the director of media and we're coming up on number 11 and you all have gotten so big you've changed venues a, a couple of times but you're at the renaissance center which is the biggest i mean it's and we're it's an impressive production folks um if you don't know what a convention is this is a great way to jump in because <laughs> Uh, you, it's anime, but you cover a lot. It's pop culture too, right? As absolutely. Well. But you got a big weekend coming up, so so we want to get some of the, the the juicy details. You know what's going on. Um, God, I don't even know where to start because we have so much going on. I guess starting with guests is always a great thing. That's because a good we thing. Have so many, so many that we couldn't fit it all on this little postcard that we have here with us today. But um. We've got a lot of the Demon Slayer cast actually coming this year. So we've got like Zach Aguilar and Bryce Pappenbrook and Alex Lee. I think almost everybody who we actually have in our voice actors have some minor role even on there. Yeah, and Jesse, Demon Slayer is huge right now. I will say this, Jesse. I've been to you know many panels, and I think one of my all-time favorite panels and one guy that just seemed very good with the fans and really nice was By- Bryce Pappenbrook. Oh, yeah. I'm like... Anytime he goes anywhere, I want to make sure I get to his panel. He is absolutely fabulous with attendees. I mean, just he really knows how to work a crowd. He's good, but he's just a genuine dude. Oh, yeah. He's absolutely a wonderfully nice guy. Yeah, that's awesome. So, okay. So, so great guests, basically, in the voice acting and video gaming world. You know, they do a lot. You might be listening to a commercial in here. Oh, yeah. Kids. I mean, there's they, they're all over Bryce the place. has done, like, kids' TV shows, too. Because I remember watching one with my... Uh, my little nephew and I was like, "This sounds familiar." And I looked it up; it was Bryce Pappenbrook. I sure, like, I cannot believe that, but it was great. But you know, um, uh, Jennifer, I don't know you and Ryland. Maybe you could. I always put this at uh, Jesse, and I'm like, for people that don't know anything about a convention, how would you describe it? And it's it's pretty hard to give an elevator pitch because literally there's things going on almost 24 hours a day at a convention. So. Um, it can be a little overwhelming at first. Um, definitely make sure that you have a schedule or download our app. Um, but there's stuff going on all the time. We have five rooms that have panels going constantly. And if you're not in one of those panels attending those, we still have our huge vendors room and also our big, big gaming room that's doubled in size this year. We're actually having two companies bring arcade cabinets this year. Wait, 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 wait. Twi- where are you going to put them? Because it's already a massive video game room. I mean, it's, uh, I don't know how you're doubling that. It, it's it's fine. There's okay. room. <laughs> All right. <laughs> less I didn't know that. Space. More games, less floor space. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you're eating up some of the floor because yeah. the video bit. game room is impressive. I mean, it's really a wide variety too. So. But uh, and you have yeah board gaming. The oh yeah, we awesome. that that's a whole room by itself too. It, it's actually it's two of the two o three and two o four something like that. It gets two rooms by itself just for analog gaming. You know, I would say this to people too. If you're out there and you've never been to a convention and you're sort of curious, the 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 one reason alone, no matter who you are, even if you don't think you're into this, is the shopping experience. So you're gonna find gifts for you're gonna meet the artists that make them. And I guarantee you're going to be a hero at Christmas or something when you buy that custom 
piece of art or whatever. Definitely. And that's a good gateway because then after that you're like, okay, wait, this place is awesome. I'm coming back every year. So, but um, but uh, you got great guests and uh, I mean a lot of a lot of programming and everything. But um, it's I like how um, I I, I just like the flow. You got it laid out really nicely too. I mean, uh, it's it's got a good ergonomic flow. And well, it helps too <laughs> because they did that remodel, um, and we got to actually experience the new remodel last year for the first time and it's opened up the hallways quite a bit so there's a lot more pedestrian friendly walking space now right it's just it's easier with the layout in general so I, i'm really appreciative of them going through that remodel um are there any hotel rooms left probably not right you sell out your room <laughs> block pretty we usually do um, but you can always call the hotel to see if somebody has um, canceled their reservation, see if you can get in. So I always recommend that. And then there's other, you know, smaller hotels around the area if you can't get in. So there's plenty of things in walking distance. If you've never been to a convention, it's worth the extra money to get a hotel room. And I'm not oh, yes. saying, uh, I mean, you may or may not want to do this, but man, when you're young... Team up with five or six of your friends, and you'll be <laughs> even if you're sleeping in the bathtub. I man, remember sleeping yeah. on the floor when I was younger because <laughs> we just y'all had to work together in order to afford the hotel room. But then you can change, you can shower, you can take a. Quick it's worth break the money. You, yeah. It's Please, worth the money. shower. Yeah. 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 Oh my god, deodorant shower. We have to go over this every year, people. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Brandon, you know. Oh, they, oh I was yeah. gonna say, and this is why we can't get uh, hotel sponsorships for Geek Tank Radio. Because they don't like when you recommend that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know if they like us telling you to cramp. But, you know, let's yeah. face it. The, you know, people do. But having a we, room uh, changes the whole experience. I so. will tell you, one year at MidSouthCon, we had 25 people in our room. And then I had people renting floor space for their stuff. 25? I made two grand on that MidSouthCon. It was the last one out at the Holiday <laughs> Is this why the Hilton doesn't let us go back now? <laughs> oh, no, no. This was before then. <laughs> this was well before then. Um, hey, we haven't even told people how to get tickets or where, uh, you know how to learn more. So what do they need to do? Uh, you can go to uh, animeblues.com slash registration, and you can find a link there to head to our ticket buying website. Um, and we are actually offering single-day tickets online this okay. year where you can register online for those. Um, and you can also, of course, pick up your three-day uh, ticket. So wait, well. it's not too late because we always recommend ordering in advance. No, it is not too late at all to, okay. to go online and get your registration taken so, care of. So July 7th through 9th at the Renaissance Center downtown. The parking's great. You just park. You, you could, literally don't even have to go outside. It could be pouring rain and it doesn't yep. slow you down Got at all. Got a skywalk. You can just come up from the garage, use the skywalk to the hotel. You never have to go outside if you don't want to. Okay, and we'll be there. Uh, we'll, we'll have our promotion booth there. So, hey, uh, we're looking forward to it. We hope between now and then you all get some sleep and uh, charge up your batteries. But um, you're going to stick around, though, because we're, we're going to be talking. We, we really triggered you with our next conversation. <laughs> just, we're going to uh, talk A about little. secret invasion, and we're bound to weigh into the AI art controversy. You're listening to Geek Tank Radio. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. You're listening to Geek Tank Radio on 98.1 The Max. Mark Hamill still hasn't returned their phone calls. The Geek Patrol is back. I mean, I'm pretty sure I got the right number. That guy on the internet told me it was the right number, so yeah. I, don't know. I can't understand it. And welcome back to uh, Geek Tank Radio, everybody. I'm not looking at Brandon because I know he's rolling his eyes. I'm Joe Thorderson here with my friends Brandon Olmstead and Alan Gilbreth. I may have sprained something. Yeah, and our buddy Max over there behind the glass and our three buddies from uh, Anime Blues Con because it is that time of year. It's coming up July 7th through 9th. Uh, at the Renaissance Center is the uh, 11th annual Anime Blues Con. So we brought in uh, Jesse Gaston, Rylan, and Jennifer, uh, a husband and wife duo who are... You are so fascinated by that. Just because your wife doesn't want anything to do with your convention doesn't mean others don't. I guess that's noteworthy. Yeah, because, you know, my my kid, nobody's impressed with, yeah, her, hey, with what I my do. My wife's but, the same way. She goes, in, go have fun. And then she enjoys herself. The she weekend. reads her book. And yep. stuff. Yeah. I, yeah. But now Jesse, your husband is right in there with you. He is right in there. He doesn't want the responsibility of like being a director, but he wants to be right in the mix and helping out. Yeah. But for a guy that doesn't want to be involved, he sure runs around. I see him working quite a bit. No, he's a hard worker. He just wants, he just wants to he be doesn't want a given direction. He <laughs> wants all the fun without all the responsibility. He's a, <laughs> he's like a free range volunteer you could say so a free range free volunteer range. A, a, an frv I, I, he was voluntold and then he just decided he likes it <laughs> <laughs> voluntold i, mean, I to like be, that to be fair i'm, I'm kind of in the same position okay all right well 
Uh, so we're looking forward to that. So, folks, if you want to get to Anime Blues, we highly recommend it. It is a great gateway. It's it's a very well-produced convention. It's a lot of fun. And it's not just anime. There's, there's a lot of pop culture. Mm -hmm. And it is just an experience. And we can't really paint a big picture here because there's too much. It's just... But drink plenty of water. Yes. Sleep and shower, please. Yes. We ask. And, and get off food. your feet every now and again and <laughs> eat, eat normal food. food. Yeah. But uh hey, uh and we'll You be, cannot live on Pocky alone. Yeah, we'll be talking about We've that. We've tried. And uh, of course we'll we'll be set up there in our promotional booth as well. So we we, we hope to meet everybody there. But Brandon, now Secret hey. Invasion came out. I yes. I'll, I'll go on record three or four weeks ago when you mentioned this, I you didn't bluntly care. said I don't care about this, I'm done with whatever. I watched it out of uh -huh. duty, and I actually really enjoyed it. But, you know, it's funny. When I called you, I, uh, I said, Brandon, you know what my favorite part of the whole show was? It was the intro. It was really trippy, and the artwork was really cool. And you go, oh, really? Well, you just waded into the controversy because <laughs> that was created by AI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I feel guilty because now I'm looking at uh, Jesse because, Jesse, I, I know you have feelings about this too. I so. do, but I actually was talking about this with my husband last night, and he yeah. made a great point about this is just the first episode, and people are kind of judging too early because it's supposed to be an evolution. Mm -hmm. So we'll see kind of where it goes. Well, I, I agree with that, but when the artist who worked on the entire uh, series came back and responded right afterwards because they didn't tell him they were going to do that, it's like... That's the whole yeah. issue I have, I feel like, a lot of times with AI is that you're stealing work from people and not giving them any sort of heads up credit that's why right. it's all trained on stuff that's stolen yeah, yeah because jesse when i'm looking at it i'm like okay this art is not unfamiliar it looks like different styles we've probably seen right. and so i'm sure it, like you said it just go alan's told us it goes on the internet and it it gets sucked it just, up it by this algorithm been created right so, yeah. and so like it, it just it kills me on the inside to see all these people generating stuff with it and not giving any sort of credit to the person who spent years of training and practice <laughs> to get there and we're just saying yeah let's just plug it into this and it'll handle it now the other thing i mentioned to, to brandon and this is before i knew anything about the ai i said it i said it was really interesting but there's something very jarring about it because the way the image's transition is not normal animation. It looks odd, and it looks a little, I don't know what, scary yeah. or so. There's something weird All about All the hands it. are Just messed up. Abnormal. Well, then, see, and that's like a huge thing is that humans still have to go back and edit it half the time because it can't do things like hands. Hands are a famous example of how it can't yeah. handle it. Oh, I even have, AI right. has prob problems with that. No, hands. they yeah. want to do like six fingers on it. It like, can't <laughs> handle hands. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know that's going to go on the entire weekend now. Yeah. I know. Um, but but uh, Brandon, I mean, right? uh, I don't know though because as I was thinking about it, we've had computer. Okay, one of my favorite movies of all time is Cars. Right. And okay, well that's computer animation, but but it's still, it, it had a lot of artists yeah. that had to work on it. There's, However, the computer still had to translate. Well. It seems to me there, this AI art, they're just doing more translating than before. Uh, uh, no, no, no. no. Okay. There's, Having there's, done 3D animation yeah. in college, no. Okay. There's gotcha. a big difference between an artist, a, a animator of any kind, a computer animator as well, who sits down and puts the time, the effort to build these models. They may have a little bit of a computer assistance, but no, when you're doing that stuff, most of that is you building it from the ground up exactly. so that that model can fit into various other things. Exactly. Okay. Oh. And one of the big issues here is credit where credit is due. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. And right there. Technology, and I'm going to go way yeah. back. I'm going to go back to the uh, Grinch who stole Christmas oh. when it was a shock to everybody that Boris Karloff did not sing the song. Oh. And uh. did not, and the singer did not get credit when it originally aired hmm. okay. because the TV station didn't want people to know that Tony the Tiger was in a Boris Karloff cartoon. Well, because they wanted people to buy the cereal, man. And any number of actors and actresses have come back when they saw the movie they were in and realized they got CGI'd, or even so far as poor Andy McDowell getting her entire voice lifted out of Tarzan. Hmm. She's not the one talking in that entire movie. So is that for you, Jesse, the problem? It's just the, they're, they're it's, not getting their credit. They're not getting... Uh, that's one of the many issues, yeah. but it's definitely a huge one. And, well, and let's just be honest. Using AI right now, when you had plenty of time to go back and re-edit this opening, mm -hmm. 
in the midst of the writer strike, the upcoming actors possible strike, and the director's renegotiations to try and keep AI out of things. Yeah, this is almost like Disney and Marvel just spitting in the face of those writers who are currently on strike who don't want AI used to replace them. Yeah, it seems yeah, like a the pretty, timing is terrible. Right. You know, and Jesse, the other thing is you're an art teacher, and we've talked about this in the past. Art isn't just to be consumed. We benefit when we create art. Like, we're our lives are enriched when we create. Oh, yeah. And if we just get to a point where we're not creating and we're just absorbing whatever is put in, that's not good either. So, you know. It's not if, the future I imagined for us. I thought we would be doing the creating and letting the robots handle the menial work. It seems like it's going <laughs> the other way around. Right. <laughs> well, you saw the Terminator. I mean, come on, Jesse. We know how this goes. But, guys, uh, hey, we can't wait. We're going to see. The, the debate's going to continue, Brandon, oh, yeah. of course. But uh, we got to get out of here, man. There is no time left. So until next week, we are the Geek Patrol, and I am Joe Thorderson. I'm Alan Gilbert, sitting here with Max behind the glass. Jesse Gaston. Jennifer Williams. Rylan Williams. And I am Brandon Olmstead, reminding you, Geek Tank will never be brought to you by artificial intelligence or really any intelligence at all.